you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Masculine leadership in marriage is a calling to serve sacrificially. Masculine leadership in marriage is not an opportunity to be served, but it's a calling to serve sacrificially. Manhood is defined as sacrificial servanthood. And any man that is not a servant is just a male. Are you searching for direction or just need a word from God? Join the World Changers Nation for service every Sunday at 10 a.m. or restream at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Together, we're understanding grace and empowering change. Text Watch Now to 51555 or visit worldchangers.org for more information about our services and streaming times. We're in this together. No matter where we are, we are World Changers. See you online. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. If you have your Bibles, go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 5. 1 Timothy 2 and 5. We've been uh, for a while now talking about grace based relationships. And we've been talking about relationships starting with man's relationship with God. And we moved into man's relationship with one another, godly friendships. And now we're talking about marriage, the marriage relationship. And one of the things we discovered is that if we're going to have marriages that work correctly, we've got to identify correctly and in biblical context what it means when the Bible says stuff like, man is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church. We have discovered that that word head doesn't mean to dominate, nor does it mean to rule over. That word head is, comes from a Greek word kephali, which means source. Or you understand that, you know, God is the source that Jesus came from and, and, uh, and, and, G and Jesus is the source that the church came from. But the woman, she came from man. And so man is the source of nourishment for a woman just like God is the source of nourishment for Jesus, just like Jesus is the source of nourishment for the church. And the atmosphere that you, that you come from is also the atmosphere that's responsible for providing nourishment. If a cow comes from the dust of the ground, then he eats his food from that same atmosphere. If a fish is in the atmosphere of water, then his food, his nourishment is going to be found in that same atmosphere. Well, so likewise, if a, uh, the wife has come from the man, then that man is going to be responsible for being the faucet that flows the nourishment into his wife and into his family. And so we thought for a long time as men that to be the head was to be the boss, and that is not the truth. We thought that to be the head was to be the, the dominant party, the one who would rule over. God didn't call us to rule over anything. He called us to rule over creation, but he never called us to rule over one another. And so we have been learning that a man has to understand what it means to be the head. And a man's got to understand that he's the faucet by which the love of God flows to his wife. And so, you know, we've been tricked as men because if, if, man, the reason to come to church should be bigger in the life of a man than for anybody because you're the, you're the faucet. And uh, if you got muddy water flowing out of your faucet, ain't nobody going to take a bath. 
and, 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 and so we've been spending a lot of time really talking to men, not beating men up, because, you know, we, none of us knew. And, and none of us, nobody told us. And so we took what we defined last week as toxic masculinity, and we live by toxic masculinity, which is just strictly man law, and um, it, it, messed us, it, it messed the whole thing up. Right now, you got all kinds of crazy relationships going on in the world. You got, you know, sugar mamas, sugar daddies, you got all kinds of weird things going on, and none of it's based in God's Word. And as a result of it, you got a lot of painful, broken, hurt people because they, they don't know the plan that God has for marriage, the plan that God has for relationship. And so Taff and I thought we would take some time and begin to break this down. Now, I thought I was finished with, uh, you know, kind of informing men of things. I was going to start with, uh, with women today, and, and, but, but I need to define masculinity. So today we're going to talk about defining masculinity. Now, somebody says, one woman says, well, what does it have to do with me? You, you need to have a clear understanding of masculinity so you quit so you'll quit marrying a male and start marrying a man. But if you don't know what masculinity is all about, you'll keep marrying a little boy somewhere and, 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 and thought you were marrying a man because they had the, the equipment, but the whole time you've been, you've, been, you've, been, you've been hooking up with males and not men. So we need to define masculinity. And so I want to start off by this. Jesus' life embodied true masculinity. Masculine, masculine leadership in marriage isn't an opportunity to be served. Masculine leadership in marriage is a calling to serve sacrificially. Masculine leadership in marriage is not an opportunity to be served but it's a calling to serve sacrificially. Manhood is defined as sacrificial servanthood. And any man that is not a servant is just a male. Now, I am going to answer a question that came, uh, or a situation that came through the stream last week through our, our uh, streaming audience, which I thought I wasn't going to deal with, but I, I, I think I will. You know, last week, a comment of two were made about the fact that, well, Jesus is not a fair model for manhood because he's Jesus. And, and then they said, and besides that, Jesus is not really a model of man because he wasn't married. Okay, so you know how I felt already, right? <laughs> so you mean to tell me that all of us who are now married were not men before we got married? Well, what, what, what was we? No, you, it's not having to be a husband to be married. You need to make sure you know what manhood is about before you become a husband, all right? And so, you have to understand the only reason that God came into the earth as a man is so he, he could be a legal example of how to operate on the earth. So if anybody is a legitimate model of manhood, it absolutely would be Jesus. Now, let me share some scriptures with you. Jesus is a, not only is he a, a, a perfect model for manhood, but, you know, he, he's a, a perfect model for somebody who was fully man, but also fully God, showing us how to be men and how to operate with the Holy Ghost once he moves on the inside of your life. So we can look at the life of Jesus and have this great model of what we're supposed to be like. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 5, and here's what he says, For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, and the man, Christ Jesus. So the Bible refers to him as the man, Christ Jesus. Now look at Hebrews chapter 4, 15 and 16. Let's look at it in the King James and then the NLT. And I'm going to give you a huge list today. He Hebrews chapter 4, 15 through 16 in the King James and the NLT. He says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities or weakness, but was in all points, Jesus was in all points tempted just like we are. The difference is he didn't sin. Verse 16, 
Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in a time of need. So he says, the grace of God is what helped Jesus as a man. Let us come boldly to the throne of God and let us ask for this same grace to help us in our manhood. Look at this in the, in the uh, New Living Translation. He says, the high priest of ours understands our weaknesses. See, he was, a, he was a man. He understands our weaknesses. For he faced all of the same testings we do. Seriously? You think Jesus was a man and walked on the earth and, and didn't have to, like, watch his eyes? Jesus faced the same test that every man faced, yet he did not sin. Why? So let us come boldly to the throne of, of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. I'm telling every man in here, you have access to grace to help you in a time of need. Amen? Now, uh, let me mention this because how did Jesus show his humanity? I'm going to give you the scriptures for time's sake, but Jesus was born to a human mother, Matthew chapter 1, 25. Jesus was born to a human mother. Secondly, Jesus experienced hunger as a man, Matthew 21 and 18. Matthew 21 and 18, Jesus experienced hunger as a man. Number three, Jesus experienced thirst. You know, you say, well, he's not fair because he was God. No, no, he was all man. He was fully man, but fully God. He experienced thirst, according to John 19, 28. Number four, he experienced temptation. Jesus experienced temptation. Uh, in Matthew 4 and 1, you see that. Jesus experienced temptation. In the garden, Jesus, Jesus went through depression and stress. Why do you think he sweat blood? Number five, he experienced pain and suffering in Matthew 16, 21. Jesus suffered pain. So he knows, he knows every man in here that's ever went through pain and suffering, Jesus knows he suffered that pain. And number six, he died. <laughs> he died. Yeah, somebody say, oh, yeah, but he died. He just got up earlier than the rest of us. We all going to get up too. But he died in Matthew 27 and 50. And so there is a difference between maleness, maleness, and manhood. Maleness and manhood. You can be a male, but not necessarily a man. But you're not a man until you become a sacrificial servant. And you need to know how to pick a man and not just a male. And sometimes women are so hungry just for a male, they get upset that they ain't got a man. So don't get upset with him and tell him that you ain't no man. You knew that when you met him. So if you're not serving others like Jesus, you're not fully walking in biblical manhood. If Jesus is the model for manhood, then if you're not serving others, then you're not walking in biblical manhood. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 8 in the King James, it talked about how, you know, here's G it, it, listen, if, it, listen, if anybody's a man, Jesus is. Amen. You ain't going to find nobody more manly than Jesus. Nobody, nowhere. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. That's a man. Look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. That's a man. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. All right, the man Christ Jesus. What mind did he have in him? Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal to God. Seven, but he made himself of no reputation. That's a man. He took upon himself the form of a servant, that's a man, and was made in the likeness of men. There you go. He said, he said when you become a servant, you're made in the likeness of men. You, you're, not a, you're, you're, you're nowhere near manhood if you stand in the center of the circle wanting to be served but not serving. And so, ladies, when you date a man 
who's looking for you to just give, 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 and he wants to receive, 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 and he's never serving you, you have a male in your presence, not a man, because there is no such thing as manhood without sacrificial servanthood. Our lack of proper education on manhood and credible role models has led to the deterioration of manhood, which has created a deluded image in our modern youth of what a real man should be. Therefore, as a result of this, toxic masculinity exists today in our society, which is a term used to simply describe the negative aspects of exaggerated masculine traits like, you know, men don't cry. Uh, men are strong at all times. Uh, 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 men drink alcohol and do blood, uh, do, do blood. <laughs> Sound like a vampire. Men drink alcohol and do drugs. Uh, men like sports. I, like, I know a lot of men who don't like sports. I know a lot of men who, who are created and they're artists and, and they like that stuff. Is he, is, that, is he less than a man because he's not falling within the man law of this exaggerated masculine trait? A real man has big muscles. A real man has a lot of sex and money. A real man has a sugar mama. A real man is dominant. A real man got two or three women at the same time, and they all taking care of him. And what he doesn't understand, if you're, if you're being taken care of by three or four women at the same time, and you're not working, and you ain't got the new number to lay up and, and provide sex when they come home, you don't realize you have been, you have been, let me say this right now, you have been, uh, You have been castrated. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Chris. Actually, you've been castrated. You've been robbed of the development of manhood. And you sitting up, beating your chest like it's good. Look at me. I'm being taken care of by a woman. Now she has clipped you. And they're rolling down a hill somewhere, and you don't even know it. Lord, help me. I need to stay right. You don't even know it. You, don't, you, can't even re, you can't reproduce nothing because you've been so used to somebody else doing it for you. You can't reproduce the support. You can't reproduce nothing because you don't have the equipment no more to reproduce because you've been castrated by them women. Amen. Brother? And so the overemphasis of these traits may lead to harmful imbalances in someone trying to live up to these expectations. Man trying to keep man law. And by him trying to keep man law and, and, and men don't cry, then he becomes aggressive. And then he becomes sexually aggressive or wants to be in control and he wants to control people. And, 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 and he doesn't show any emotion and he suppresses all of his emotions and, 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 and he's hyper competitive and, and, and he, he has a need to dominate and control people. He has a tendency, you know, to glorify violence He's isolated. He, he, he's empty. He, he's, he's entitled. He's a chauvinist. He's a sexist because he's trying to keep man law. And some men just say, I, 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 that's just not me, so I, I'm, I need to fight or flight or, or do something else because you bought the lie. We've been tricked, man. We have been tricked. So I want to spend the rest of my time talking about the characteristics of manhood. I, I want to talk about, uh, I shared one time the Ten Commandments of manhood. Now you would think men take good notes. No, I'm saying women take good notes. You need to know a man when you see one. You've been tricked. And you ought to be tired of being tricked. No lasting relationship will ever be effective if you are marrying people based on the pocketbook and not based on the love and the commitment to serve you in your life. <laughs> you, you ain't got to clap. I wasn't expecting no clapping today. I was just praying that y'all still love me after this sermon's over with. <laughs> the characteristics of manhood, I, I, let me say this first. I think right here we need to give a, a real definition of masculinity. What is masculinity? The simplest answer is being the man that God intended you to be. Masculinity 
is being the man that God intended you to be. If we talk about manhood away from the Bible, all you're getting is somebody else's warped opinion of manhood. Being the man that God intended you to be. No human or Hollywood interpretation can present the correct definition of manhood. Instead, we must look at the overall big picture of what does God want me to be like? He created you. What does God want me to be like? Think about that. Well, where did humans come from? Big Bang. No, no, you came from God. And what did God created you to be like? How are we going to continue to look around trying to capture definitions of manhood from Hollywood, from movies and all that kind of stuff, and ignore the very one that created you. So let's look at some practical areas of manhood. Number one, a real man puts God first. That sounds strange. It, it, that sounds strange because men, men, don't, men don't come to church like they... I don't know if they've ever come to church, I, and, and I understand why. Because when I go to church, I got tired of being dogged out. I, be, I got tired of everything being my fault. I got tired of, you know, it's... But I'm just hoping that through teaching this, some real men will grab a hold of it and help me spread the message of what real manhood is about. But there's no way you can be a real man if you don't put God first. This is by far the most important point. This is by far the most important characteristic. Since true masculinity is defined as whom God wants us to be, then the only way to become that man is to put God first in your life. The world would never consider this part of true manhood. But in fact, it far outweighs all other characteristics. It should be the one that is worked on the most, the characteristic that's worked on the most, putting God first. One who is with you for the rest of your life. And by putting God first, you will automatically be on your way to building masculinity. By not putting God first, you're still wandering around in the desert trying to figure out what, what is a real man. And, and you keep buying all these fake definitions, and you keep listening to, 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 to men who are males trying to define manhood. Think of that, listening to, 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 to male men. You see, real manhood, it, it, it consists of the knowledge of your mind. It consists of the worth of your character. It consists of the principles upon which you build your life on. We're talking about real manhood. Number two, a real man respects everyone. We don't tear people down. We respect. And you're hooked up on a date with somebody that doesn't respect you. How is it that you're desperate to marry somebody that doesn't respect you, and you see his disrespect as a sign in the very beginning and still pursue to tolerate it, you would rather devalue yourself just so you can have a man when you can see because of his lack of respect for you. I mean, he's standing at the door waiting on you to open the door for him. Let me read Philippians 2, 3 through 4 in the NLT. Here, here, here's manhood right here. Philippians 2, 3 through 4 in, in the NLT. He said, don't be selfish. And, you're, and, you're, and you're, you went out on a date with somebody that clearly is self-centered. He's clearly all about himself. And there's a sign. There's a sign. Once again, that's the sign. You saw that same sign in the previous date. You saw that same sign in the other date. And you keep asking yourself, why do I keep ending up with the wrong kind of man? You, it's not that. You just keep ignoring the signs. Submission, headship, equality. 
Have you heard those buzzwords going around lately? Wonder what they have to do with living as a true Christian in the 21st century? Creflo Dollar tackles these concepts head on in the series Grace-Based Relationships, Volume 2, Understanding Biblical Headship. Headship is a source of love. The head, the source by which love flows. Being a man is less about control and more about serving sacrificially. Relationship is designed to be a blessing. You can have the three messages in this series for a love gift of only 20 US dollars or more, plus shipping and handling. Simply call the number on your screen or go to creflodollarministries.org and click eStore to get this timely word that can make a difference in all your relationships today. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. Whether you're in the living room, the bedroom, the car, the garage, I just pray the presence of God will just sit down on you right now. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. It's your season. This is your moment. This is your time. You're going to bring forth. You're going to grow. You're going to flourish. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. The Bible teaches us to give generously with a cheerful heart, not out of necessity, but out of a cheerful heart. And that's why I'm so grateful for the friends and partners of this ministry who freely and cheerfully give financial offerings to support us. You understand our vision. You know that when people understand grace, they're empowered to change their lives for the better. Thank you for supporting us with your financial donations. And every time you give, you're being used by God to stop misfortune in someone else's life. And for that, we say thank you. God bless you. If you want to honor the Lord by sowing financial seeds into Creflo Dollar Ministries, call the number on your screen or log on to creflodollarministries.org. Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app brings you live church services direct to your smart TV and much more. You'll also get access to Changing Your World Network, streaming grace messages and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Get unlimited streaming through Roku, Amazon, and Apple TV absolutely free. Visit your app store. Download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming. For more information, visit creflodollarministries.org. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.